Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a little follow-up to the previous video I released which talked about the top 5 gaming experiences I had this year. Today I'm going to talk about the top 5 games I'm looking forward to coming out next year. Well, hopefully coming out, that's I think a caveat you always need to talk about because I think there's still a chance some of these are going to be delayed, but hopefully all of these are coming out. Uh, some of them do have pretty specific release dates, uh, and for the others, who knows. Yeah, this is going to be some of the games that have caught my attention and I think should be good. Of course, nowadays you can never tell. That's why outside of a very few specific cases, I don't tend to pre-order games. I think that's a bad habit. I think you should always at least wait until the release day and check out a couple of reviews and decide whether the game is actually worth it instead of dropping the cash up front and being really disappointed. Uh, but that's besides the point, we're not here to talk about the merits or not merits of pre-ordering. We are going to talk about some of the games I'm looking forward to coming out next year. I think these should all be pretty good. Whether I'm actually gonna check them out on the channel, I'm not sure. I think some of these, yes, some of these I would prefer to leave just uh, for myself to play and enjoy. Yeah, this is going to be not scripted, unlike the previous video. This is just me sitting down and sort of rambling, so I apologize if my thoughts are a little bit less coherent, but you have gameplay in the background of probably the greatest game ever released, uh, which is Corpse Killer, specifically the 25th anniversary of Corpse Killer. On the Switch, again, it's only the greatest FMV game and greatest game ever released, so you have that to enjoy. Anyways, let's get into game number one that I think should be good. Uh, this is going to be Lies of P. Now I stumble over the name of this game every single time I pronounce it because I keep trying to say Life of Pi, which is the movie. But no, this is Lies of P, which just is just way too close of a title to the other one for me not to get it confused. Anyways, the premise of this might sound a little bit weird because this is essentially a Bloodborne inspired Souls-like based on Pinocchio and I have no idea what's going on recently but I can only say that we are living in peak Pinocchio I swear there's a new Pinocchio movie show game or whatever coming out like every month and Lies of P is not looking to bug the trend that's for sure however as far as Bloodborne clones and Souls-likes go this one is actually looking pretty solid. There have been a couple of Bloodborne clones released. That's not really the Souls-like that gets copied the most. I think there were two that were released this year in 2022, both of which ended up being mediocre slash terrible. There was that one where you played the Plague Doctor and the other one where you played the robot sort of French made. Uh, and this is closer to that. This is closer to robot French made game. Uh, from this year, as in uh, you, you play Pinocchio, who's essentially like an automaton robot, and you fight other clockwork steampunk robots. Uh, the thing that really impressed me with this game is the gameplay that was shown. It's basically Bloodborne. I mean, this is not looking to innovate on anything, but I don't mind that because if you're gonna emulate one game, uh, you should em like you should try to emulate Bloodborne because that is a fantastic game, and no one has managed to pull it off. And just the gameplay I've seen of Lies of P sort of shows me that they are sort of sticking to the formula. They recognize that they should just sort of, you know, try to copy it and try to make a decent Bloodborne clone. Uh, the combat is looking good. Uh, the enemies are looking interesting. There's some cool weapons. I mean, there are no trick weapons in the game, uh, from what I can tell. The bigger innovation here in Lies of P, which is, I think, actually a fairly good innovation, is that you can use your gun, uh, your gun arm, in a number of different ways. You can have like a grappling hook to draw in enemies. You can actually free aim it and shoot it. Uh, to like sort of draw enemies to you and it's just looking like the gun is a little bit more useful which I fully agree with I think one of my issues gameplay wise with Bloodborne is I wish the gun had a little bit more of a use than to shoot dogs and to parry I think yeah if you're gonna have a gun let me free aim and let me draw at enemies and do all that but yeah Liza P is looking to do that 
And again, yeah, the game is just looking fairly solid. You don't have to reinvent the wheel with everything. If they can put a solid Bloodborne clone together, I will be a happy camper because Bloodborne is my favorite Souls-like. Souls-like, did I just say Souls-like? I meant my favorite Soulsborne game. And if there's something that can reach like 85% of blood, what Bloodborne can do, I can be happy. Especially since the amount of Souls clones that actually turn out good is... Well, there's few and far between games that actually manage to do what FromSoft does, and even fewer manage to get to what Bloodborne does. This is supposed to release in 2023. This is one of those that I'm not sure will actually get released. I mean, it says 2023, but there have been no sort of deeper uh, hints as to when. There was a fairly lengthy gameplay sort of trailer, I think 31 minutes of gameplay released during the Games Awards, and even that one had like placeholder dialogue, so I have my doubts whether this one is actually coming out. Hopefully it does and we'll have our obligatory good Souls-like for 2023. Alright, next up on our list, this is probably one that's not going to surprise anyone who is at all familiar with the channel, this is going to be Street Fighter VI. So with Street Fighter VI, we do have the actual release date confirmed, which is good. I think it's releasing uh, June 6th, or June 2nd, no, no, it was June 2nd. Uh, so we do have a summer release date for Street Fighter VI. I've talked about Street Fighter VI, I think, briefly before, but I'm really impressed with what Capcom has been doing. Even now, I've for the past couple of years, I've held the belief that Capcom is probably one of the most solid developers currently out there. Um, they had a rut before where they were releasing some trash games. I mean, Street Fighter V did not have the smoothest uh, release time, and that's, I think, putting it mildly. Um, but I think Capcom have really taken the lessons over the past couple of years, and they are releasing good games. I mean, I've enjoyed all of the Resident Evil remakes. I probably will enjoy a Resident Evil 4 remake as well. I like the new Resi games as well. And yeah, with Street Fighter VI, basically everything they've shown so far, and all of the gameplay, and the betas, which sadly I did not get into, uh, rip me, hopefully there will be an actual open beta. Um, all of these basically shows that Capcom have taken all of the complaints and all of the lessons uh, from Street Fighter V and are integrating them into Street Fighter VI. I mean, V anyways, in its current state, in its sort of end stage, is a great game. The balance is very good, there are a lot of characters, a lot of options, the online on PC is running fairly well, and what they basically needed to do and what they're doing is just taking that and adding some new mechanics and refining some stuff and putting that out as Street Fighter 6. I think the art style of the game is looking really cool. Uh, the new characters so far, basically every character so, shown so far has looked fantastic. The animations are really smooth. I like that they, the Street Fighter 6 aesthetic is sort of returning to what Street Fighter 3 did with sort of that hip hop graffiti type aesthetic. And yeah, there are a lot of new mechanics, there's a parry, uh, it's back in a different sort of way, drive rush, uh, fuck, what, what are the other ones? There's a bunch of other mechanics, you have armored attacks, you can uh, dash cancel stuff, and it looks like they're sort of integrating a lot of the mechanics from the past and putting that into Street Fighter VI. I like the new mechanic with the bar to manage, uh, so you have your meter, but you also have the drive gauge, which you need to manage, sort of a little bit like what MK11 did, except even more refined, because MK11 you only have two bars of defense and two bars of offense. Here you have a, just one bar for both and you have to manage the resource, which is looking like an interesting tactical uh, sort of addition to the game. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. I love fighting games, I love Street Fighter, and I honestly can't wait to dive into this one. They just need to show some Zangief gameplay, because I think Zangief is gonna be my man. And I wanna see uh, what Zangief can do, because I wanna grapple some fools. Alright, let's continue on. Another game that has an actual release date, and is actually coming out fairly soon, uh, this is going to be Hogwarts Legacy. 
<laughs> this might be a weird one, but uh, you guys know, well, you might not know, but I am that age where I grew up with Harry Potter. I grew up with the, basically, essentially the whole book series. I was, I think, six when the first book came out, something like that. And I specifically remember, like, it's one of the first books that I really read and all that. So, obviously, I'm one of those kids that grew up with this. And I also have fond memories of the old PC games as well, uh, the old Harry Potter games, specifically the first one and the Chamber of Secrets, which I think were really charming games uh, that hold up well, unlike the subsequent ones. I mean, the fact that the last one, the Deathly Hallows games, basically Gears of War with Harry Potter is absolutely insane. Uh, and whereas the first two actually have some charm and uniqueness to it. But anyways, that's besides the point. I, what I'm trying to say is I like Harry Potter and Hogwarts Legacy is looking like essentially a nice little love letter to the franchise. Uh, open world Hogwarts with modern graphics on a modern console is looking pretty sweet. Now listen, I'm not gonna lie. This is a big AAA game and with big AAA games come big AAA risks. There is still a chance this is gonna turn out absolutely terrible or it's going to be mediocre. There have been very mediocre Harry Potter games in the past. That's why I'm sort of holding out on uh, purchasing this. I wanna see some reviews, but from what they've shown, this is looking like a nice little exploration game with some puzzle action, some combat action. I do like the combat that they're going for. I think the wand combat of Harry Potter is not the easiest to integrate into the, the game format. I think the first two games, uh, Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets, did it well. And this game is looking like that's kind of what they're shooting for. Plus, again, the game is looking nice. Apparently, it's being made by Harry Potter fans, so there's a lot of references, a lot of sort of cool stuff to explore and yeah the game is just looking nice hopefully it will turn out to be a nice little Harry Potter action adventure game where you can just kill some time and enjoy a little bit of nostalgia because I think this series is pretty good and yeah I can only hope it'll turn out well coming out February so yeah we'll see what happens in February 10. All right, fourth game on our list. I don't think this is gonna really surprise anyone. This is going to be Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Again, this is supposed to be releasing in 2023. Whether that actually will happen, we will see. I don't know if there's anything sort of confirmed in more detail, uh, but 2023 is supposed to be it. And yeah, I mean, you guys know, if you've watched the channel, I've been screaming for an Armored Core game for so long. I've always been like, FromSoft have learned a lot. It's time to bring back this series and time to release another Armored Core. And we actually have one now with Fires of Rubicon. Now, outside of its actual name and sort of the cinematic trailer shown, the details on this game are few and far between. We've essentially seen no actual gameplay. Uh, we do have the sort of story detail, which is looking to be sort of standard from soft fare. Uh, distant planet, post-apocalyptic, half a century later, blah, blah, blah. You know the usual, uh, except it's just going to be with Mecca. Uh, the other thing I know that they've said um, is that they're looking to have the gameplay of the older Armored Core games, as in like, I think Armored Core 4, not Armored Core 5, that's the one I have, that I have played, and that's like a really tactical, slow-burning game. This is supposed to be more of like a faster action game. And I think the other thing they've confirmed, which I'm really happy about, is that they are not making this a Souls-like. Uh, that's one of the things I've always talked about, that if they're gonna bring back Armored Core, it needs to be its own thing, uh, gameplay-wise. I, jo I don't just want a Souls-like with robots. First of all, we have that already, kind of. Uh, second of all, let's have some different games as well. So I'm really looking forward to this one. If this turns out well, this is going to be a fast-paced, fairly complex mech game, mech combat game, uh, where, well, we'll see how 
sort of unhelpful they go. I mean, Armored Core 5 was on the extreme end of unhelpfulness and not giving you any info, even for a FromSoft game. So they can tone that down just a little bit, but I th I'm still expecting a fairly complex game. And yeah, we'll see if people get into this. I think just based on the fact of FromSoft's name, uh, this game will be popular. We'll just see how many people are put off by it. I mean, maybe I will be put off by it. I'm not 100% sure I will like Armored Core 6, since again, I've only played five, I probably should check out some of the older games. And 5 was holy shit, man. I've played it ages ago. I don't even think you can play it anymore because the servers are shut down. But man, that game was so confusing with like zero tutorials given, zero direction. And I got very, very overwhelmed. But yeah, we'll see how this turns out. Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. I always have faith in FromSoft. So this one should be good. I'm just actually hoping it's releasing in 2023 we'll see and yeah the final game i wanted to talk about this one i am still shocked that it's actually happening this is going to be atomic heart it feels like atomic heart has been in development for as long as i can remember like existing it's been so long since this game was announced and now it's actually happening it's supposed to come out in february as well end of february Essentially, this is going to be sort of a Bioshock-inspired steampunk mech Soviet beat-em-up shooter adventure. I think that's the best way to describe it. Uh, I love Bioshock. I love the first two Bioshocks. I love Bioshock Infinite. So anything that sort of draws on Bioshock as an inspiration is going to get an immediate interest out of me. Plus, all of the reports I've heard of Atomic Heart and all of the gameplay I've seen point to the fact that this game should be pretty solid. Essentially, I think the premise is you're in this giant research area for this. Uh, well, the game is set in the Soviet Union, but in like a technologically advanced steampunk Soviet Union. And of course, there is an AI uprising because why would there not be one? And you have to go in and beat up some robots. Now. This game is semi-open world, but there are also dungeons, I think. One of the comparisons I've heard of this game is that it's similar to Halo 6. Halo Infinite, right? That's the new one. I haven't played Halo in ages. Um, in that you have dungeons and you have an open world connecting it all together. Overall, again, yeah, the shooting seems solid, but the thing that really grabbed my attention is the melee combat that they've shown. The melee combat is looking very good. It's actually, I think, trying to emulate one of the games that I think is really underrated that really got first-person melee combat right, which is Condemned 2. Um, it, look, it looks like they're kind of drawing from Condemned 2. Plus you have the Bioshock-style glove. You can shoot electricity, ice, fire, all the usual. Plus I think the aesthetic of the game and the art style are really interesting. I do love steampunk games and I do think they're getting the sort of Soviet aesthetic and all of the things that come with it right with like the giant statues the socialist buildings it just has a really unique look to it plus again I'm just glad that it's being released uh, for the fact that this is the studio's first game everything is looking really solid and yeah I've been looking forward to this game for a long time and now it's actually happening, so I'm definitely 100% going to be checking it out. This is one of those games I definitely want to cover on the channel when it does come out. I'm just so hoping that it's going to be good. Please be good, Atomic Heart. Please be good. I've waited for you for so long, and yeah, just be good. Yeah, I think that's about the five games I wanted to cover here. I think 2023 is shaping up to be a pretty good year again for gaming. Yeah, you never know. You obviously never know. Things that look shit can turn out well, and things that look good can turn out to be absolutely unplayable. It's the video game industry, so, so you know, make of that what you will. Uh, but I have faith in these uh, five games I've covered here, particularly Armored Core, I think, is the... And Street Fighter VI, because that's the game we've seen the most of. And, you know, Armored Core FromSoft, I kind of trust them blindly. Um, other than that, 
there should be a couple of more i didn't i have more games i'm looking forward to but i just didn't cover tekken 8 again that one i'm doubtful of whether it's releasing uh in next year the new final fantasy i'm sort of interested in as well so yeah we have actually quite a lot to look forward to anyways what i'm going to go ahead and do here today is wrap up this video uh, there is going to be a special video tomorrow commemorating the end of 2022 and the year of this channel, another year has passed. Until then, if you did enjoy this, make sure to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. And yeah, catch you tomorrow and catch you on my other stuff as well. Take care everyone and peace out.